my name is Damian Heinisch and I live in Norway. The book 45 describes a sequence of image fragments that emphasize and contrast human presence in their physical surroundings. The journey led me through present-day Europe from my hometown in Oslo down to the city of the Baltsevo in East Ukraine. It is inspired by train journeys taken by my relatives in 1945 and 1978, leading them to death or freedom. At the point in all three journeys, each family member turned 45. The book's narrative challenged the history of forced immigration within the boundaries of Europe's past and present. Working on a long-term project focused on my family's history in the context of the Second World War, it became inevitable that I would visit my grandfather's unknown grave in Ukraine. Back in 1945, he disappeared like a ghost along with countless men from Upper Silesia. In opposite 1978, following a lengthy existential struggle and forced political unemployment, my father left Gliwice with his family to start a new life in West Germany. I understood that my family's life had been considerably influenced by forced immigration and that trains had played a significant role in the process of resettlement. In 2013, after reading his diary, I decided to visit the area of his unknown grave in Debaltsevo. With about 120 rolls of 35mm film, I documented the changing views of present Europe. The train window became the stage. After returning, the material has been lying in my archive for over three years, until the time finally allowed to go back and examine it. The wish, those images becoming a book, has grown very strong and I joined a workshop at this time where the outcome would be a book dummy. Led by Niklas McLean and Alexandro Carablese, the members were asked to challenge the book as a format. It happened here where I set the basic form for the 45 book dummy and developed it further over the next period. I still remember printing the over 3 meter long paper webs on my printer in our studio and folding them with the Japanese binding into the dummy. I was very delighted to hear when 45 got selected as one of the finalists for the Nordic Dummy Award and was allowed to join a tour through different art institutions throughout Northern Europe. I have lived in Norway now for over 20 years. Um, as you hear on my accent, I am German. And uh, so that, that meant that uh, I spent some time in Germany. It was exactly 23 years. Um, this was my youth and educational years. Uh, but before that, I uh, grew up in Poland. So I was born in 68 in Poland um, and uh, we immigrated to Germany. And the choice to move to Oslo was my own. I came because of love. Um, so I am a son of an uh, immigration family um, and this is what this book will or is about. When I showed the book the first time to my father, he said, oh wow, this is me on the front cover. This was one of the nicest compliments I could get. Uh, my father is now 88 uh, and uh, there was very clear that there needed to be a connection. So when you go through the book, the first image in the book will be the boy. So that is maybe a connection between me and him. Uh, the sequence in the book uh, was uh, quite obvious. At the same time, it was a bit uh, challenging. Um, it is dictated by the chronology of the journey. So that means that I start with the last image in Ukraine and I finished in Oslo with, with the first image I took. So I go with the book from the front to the back. Uh, I have chosen uh, to place some images over several pages. So you see it here. That's why I have chosen as well the Japanese binding. So that means that one image can spread over several pages. You see it here. And this allowed me the feeling of of, of travel, of the journey. So the paper mechanics in a certain way support uh, the journey. Um, this is a very, very special thread 
it's uh, it's like a key thread for me. Uh, and here we're coming to the second aspect of the of the edit. Uh, I wanted to let uh, pictures meet, uh, which had more an associative thought in it. Uh, this old lady might have worked in this factory, which you see on, uh, you see on the other on the page. Um, uh, this is no coincidence. Um, I had, uh, when I came back from the journey, I used up approximately 120, 35 millimeter films. That means I had something around 4,000 images. And um, the chronology dictates uh, the edit. That means that I go from image to image to image. And uh, I look for um, combination uh, which um, uh, allows me to yeah to tell what what I was searching for. So there is always a joint point. Here it is in the structure of the of the fabric uh, of the person who is behind and the factory. And you see that uh, other threads uh, connect through lines, for example. So there is always a visual connection to see that there is no coincidence. But uh, uh, further more interesting is the associative connection. Um, from my childhood, how often have I seen um, people with these faces coming home from a factory? My uncle himself uh, was working in a plastic factory and he was smelling uh, completely to plastic. So the whole flat smells to pl plastic actually. And um, uh, it is about what uh, life brings you, the fates. Uh, so this book here, for example, two p people meet uh, with the faces. Um, there are implications of um, men observing a woman, um, groups meeting, um, the book. I don't want uh, the, the viewer to lead to something very, very specific. That means I don't say that this is the only interpretation. I want to be very open, actually, and leave it to the life experience of the viewer. So that might be that everyone sees something different in the book. What was important for me um, was rather my motivation, uh, how I'm going to create um, this uh, spreads and the combination. So this is, this is something more humoristic. You see uh, the woman who is actually in charge and you see these two men who are a bit lazy in front of a garage. This is more a, pro, a spread which uh, connects more to the poli political or historical meaning uh, you see the man of power on this poster, the way election in Ukraine. And on the other side, you see someone hanging in the trees, actually. So the implications are uh, quite close what uh, uh, this is about. Burnt out car. This is maybe one of my really, really important images, like the start where uh, um, uh, my father said, like, uh, I see him uh, myself. This is the, the image where uh, the father and the son actually really, really concretely going out to meet the mother. Um, I saw myself, so this is in principle myself. I saw this scene and I was so, so lucky that I could catch it with the camera. Uh, the trains moves very fast. And uh, you are very unhappy when you see some significant scenes and you can't catch it because you were just not fast enough. But this one, I really, really felt I, I, um, uh, it was, it was uh, in the camera and I was really looking for this image again on the film. Um, uh, I think it reflects a bit uh, of me. Uh, the longing for the mother uh, is something what I know from my childhood since my parents um, where uh, in this waiting position um, for uh, leaving the country and my father got unemployed because of this, uh, my mother provided for the family. Um, yeah, the obvious meeting, the, the wish situation, Sidan suddenly pops up on the garage. Um, boys and cars, um, girls and cars. This was again a very special um, uh, a spread. Uh, she is running for the horse and the next spread is with a girl running for the horse. But uh, I allowed myself to uh, mix up the edit uh, once in the book that you see actually when you hold this page in the middle, 
that um, uh, the girl actually and the mother are going to meet. And this was, of course, a shot as well, which uh, which which was very lucky for me because um, this just uh, life just happens and you need to react. A group which goes over six pages. They actually said goodbye to a good friend which was leaving for America, which was traveling with us in the compartment. Uh, she is placed. Um, uh, uh, um, she is placed. Um, 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 by me in the middle of the spine just because I knew that the face is going to be divided. Um, so there are spreads actually which has got a really um, key significance to me. Um, this is for example uh, Auschwitz, it's Auschwitz-Team um, and the meeting between those two it's this looking, gazing into into nothing actually and I think that the whole um, the book um, is about cropping yourself into images, uh, cropping, coming closer to the human part. Uh, it shows humans in a physical environment. Um, a lot of uh, art actually today uh, is very, very abstract. Um, we are getting more and more abstract, I think. And uh, for me, it was uh, rather important to um, fragment my images and to come closer to life, make it make it clear that the uh, that it is about life. Um, this is the area where I was born, actually, where I grew up as a child, and here, uh, where well, you see actually me playing with uh, with other uh, with other children. Uh, this could have been my home, actually, um, when my parents got the allowance to leave. Um, to leave uh, Poland, so we dismantled the whole flat and uh, we got on the train and traveled a thousand kilometers to the west without knowing what was expecting us. It's the play between vanity and um, the, the girl. This is actually our cemetery. Uh, it's, it's somehow the promise of the industry and this is the reality. These two weird um, looking man. So the book is about a uh, different kind of aspects of life, melancholy, happiness, uh, depression, uh, uh, voyeurism. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's about something what um, was stuck in me since my childhood. And I think that photography has got this ability when you see something over again, what's stuck in you, that you have the possibility to um, to let it go by pushing the button and then it leaves you. This is for me like a very typical German uh, spread, like the man which is almost a bit angry and the house, the facades of the, of the architecture which observing us. Hide and seek games between uh, children. Um, it's, it has got amplification of um, of um, uh, culture and some playfulness, even racism is um, is mentioned, and um, yeah, something what I mentioned before, uh, this kind of uh, depression. Uh, what is very very strange is that uh, the closer you coming actually to to our world, to the uh, uh, rich world, um, to to Scandinavia, Norway, the more the darker gets uh, the book get. So you see Lassie, actually the Lassie, the typical Lassie dog observed by a camera. And then I found this, um, I found this, um, um, uh, this, this writing on these walls 20 times, self-hate, self-hate, self-hate. This was very, very strong. And maybe one of my favorite spreads. It's very, it's very picturalistic. You see this on, on both sides that this black face suddenly uh, uh, observing this couple and but making it to a heart or together. So the book ends actually way it almost begins. It's like almost like a cycle. Uh, it's uh, this time it's a man and a factory, not a woman and a factory. But it seems to that life always uh, goes around and around and um, it's um, it's a cycle. When you when you uh, 
when you come to the to the uh, back part of the book so i think the whole book is like built up like a kind of riddle uh, you you might be on a train but you don't know it exactly i think the the um, confirmation that you are on a train comes much later but then you come into this red page and you see uh, you see um different kind of numbers 1945 then it's green 1978 and blue 2013 and you start reading this text uh my grandfather the 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 reason why i went on this journey was of course the visit of the grave unknown graveyard of my grandfather and um he died in uh, ukraine uh, but he was uh, leaving behind a diary which he uh, which he wrote in tiny letters over 10 months from the day when he left the the doorstep and left uh, his wife and four children behind to the day when he died and um uh, i allowed myself to take this uh, 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 this page out of his diary which describes his journey on the train it's a very very touchy uh, uh, read it is it's it is very very uh, tough and depressing actually um and it it shows you a perspective and then in 78 uh, i described the journey of my um of my father uh, which was allowed finally allowed uh, to go with his wife and his two sons uh, to start a new life in the west and the last journey in 2013 is my own journey and um, this is the physical journey actually where i traveled with the camera and what was very, very uh, special that I, before I went on this journey, I uh, uh, realized that uh, all three of us, my grandfather, my father and me, we were 45 years old when we did our journeys. So the train brought my grandfather into death, but uh, my father into um, a possibility to start a new life uh, while I was respecting the journeys of uh, uh, of both of them and this is where the book of the title so it's not just the year 1945 the book is dedicated actually to my grandfather uh walter heinisch but uh 45 got its uh, its uh title from uh, uh, uh yeah the fact that we all were 45. when you come to the end of the book uh, you find a poster. When you open it, you get the absolute confirmation that you were sitting on the train. So you see this image, actually, you found again the father and the son, uh, uh, but now in the total perspective. That means this is how I shot the images. It is about framing them with this black uh, frame. So all of them are actually photographed uh, in, in that way. But uh, I didn't want to create a catalog in the book. So the, uh, the book follows its own rules while the whole images were used in an installation which was, um, which was um, uh, shown through five uh, slide projectors. Um, when you turn the page, what I found that was very, very interesting on this journey is uh, to pass uh, a station. Stations has got something um, generic. They are all almost built up in the same way. There, there are these tracks, there is this platform, there are like seats, but there is always this name. This name, who, who names the station? And um, I was always looking out for them. That means the train uh, flows very, very fast. And uh, I always try to catch this, this name. You have actually like always two or three chances because they appear several times. Uh, and I was always happy or uh, hoping like, okay, I caught the name as well. So I could actually create this a typology, a kind of typology. Uh, when I shot the whole journey, I was not aware how it's going to look like. I was collecting material actually. Uh, so this what became uh, uh, the book and the installation uh, is something, it's a result of a long, long process. And... Um, um, this is what, uh, what, what it became, um, to, to make, 
I, I was searching for a system who connects all these images. Um, uh, I went actually in the end on three journeys. It was the physical, it was the second into my own images. That means that I was searching for life and cropping myself closer to, to humans, uh, closer to life. Uh, but the third journey was actually that I wanted to point out um, a kind of pagination in the book. Uh, I didn't want to use pages, but uh, I found it quite interesting actually to give uh, uh, the pages uh, a number, which you see here on these white stripes, which goes through the whole, whole book actually. And this, this was a kind of train system. So it was flowing like through the whole book. Uh, and I decided to leave it even on the title. And um, the kilometers are uh, uh, marked down here. So the number is the kilometer. And uh, this was just possible since I worked with 35 millimeter. This was just possible uh, through uh, going on, on Google Maps and tracking the tracks actually. It took four days to go by clicking and measuring the tracks exactly from Oslo to Debaltsevo, where his unknown grave is and finding out the numbers which belong uh, to the image. In December 2017, I was invited by the artist, curator and gallerist Christian Schulster from No Place Gallery in Oslo to join a group show called IO. The word is in Latin and stands for I go. The exhibition had movement in all variations as a leading theme. I thought this was the right opportunity to show the material uncropped in its original form. Uh, in a conversation with friends, we discussed the slideshow as an adequate presentation of the sequence. In the following period, I found myself buying up old Kodak carousel projectors. The timer function allows the most basic control of the rhythm. The resulting sound can easily be associated with a moving train or shots of a machine gun. Three of the five projectors showing the journey in a chronological order, while one in a fast moving sequence, the typology of train stations I was passing by. The last finally presents extracts from documents which belong to all three generations, my grandfather, my father and, and mine as his son. Documents played a profound role in the period of those totalitarian regimes and determined over life in freedom and in prison. The installation was also shown during the Autumn Exhibition 2018 in Oslo. The installation fulfilled over 2,300,000 slide changes in a period of five weeks. It was out of my control and I saw those small machines as a metaphor of an organism working itself into total exhaustion, something my grandfather was forced to do. This book is about a journey, but each book actually is a long, long journey. And uh, I couldn't cope alone with that. Um, I would like to thank you all who helped me on, in this long, long process, uh, deep from my heart. I still remember when I got a call uh, and Michael Mack was on the line telling me that uh, 45 was selected as the winner of this year's first book award. This was such a memorable moment for me. Um, and I would like to thank Michael Mack and the jury. Uh, and um, I would like to thank Jess, Morgan, Leif and Casey, the team from, from Mac Publishing, um, for all, all the support. You have been so such a great team and it was so lovely to meet you in London. Um, I would like to uh, thank as well the Wilson Center of Photography and the Krasna Krausch Foundation for uh, their support um, and in no way the Fritwood Foundation who helped uh, to realize uh, the whole project. Uh, you made me feel so, so proud and uh, I am so, so thankful for this year.